Oh, hi folks, I'm Mike. Welcome to my channel. If you've seen any of my videos, I'm sure you know I'll be talking about Pinewood Derby racing. If you've seen my wooden body video, you may have noticed that adjacent to the dominant front wheel, some wood had been removed from the side of the body. I've had a few people ask me about that. Well, I do that for alignment purposes. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over that and I'm gonna go over everything else I do to make sure that these bodies are aligned properly. So stay with me, you might find this helpful. Okay, so folks, the alignment of a Pinewood Derby car is probably the step that's overlooked more often than anything else. Now, when I bring up alignment, I'm talking about two things. One, making sure that the front and rear of the car are the same height off the track. And two, I'm either gonna remove or add mass at the front dominant wheel, on the side of the body at the front dominant wheel, to make sure that the car goes down straight and doesn't go down like slightly sideways. Now remember, we've already removed 1 16th of an inch at the front wheel. So that's my starting point. From this point forward, I will either be adding or removing mass. Now, the things that affect alignment are height of the front and rear drill, their relationship to one another, how much bend you put on the front axle, and the hub length of the wheel. This took me forever to figure out. I finally realized back in the day I was using the clear jig. Everyone was raving about the clear jig and I loved the clear jig, but I finally realized in order to match the bend of my front axle, I had to shim the body up 30 thousandths in the rear to lower my drill hole in the backs. I feel fortunate that I actually met Brian over at TurboDerby.com. He took the time to help me figure out how high my front and rear drills needed to be. And then he created a jig that keeps me from having to shim. Now all I have to do is make sure that the front axle is bent the same amount every time. I probably should take a few minutes here just to explain what happens if the bend on the front axle doesn't match the drill. The front end will either end up being too high or too low, which will hurt your aerodynamics. You want the car to cut the air cleanly. But more importantly, by raising the front, in essence, you're lowering the back, which creates toe out. Or if the front is too low, you're raising the back, which creates toe in. And folks, that scrubs speed. Okay guys, it's time to get started aligning this body. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I do anything else is I'm gonna drill this body. And before I waste any time going any further, I'm gonna confirm my drill is good. And how I do that is I use a straight edge, two pin gauges that measure 90 thousandths in diameter, and two one, two, three blocks. I'll insert the pin gauges. Then I'll slide the body up to the one, two, three blocks, and I'll see if I can see any daylight at all between the pin gauge and one, two, three blocks. I know a lot of other people have tried to correct a bad drill and they've had you know, limited success. I don't normally put the effort into that. If the drill is bad and I see daylight between my one, two, three blocks and the pin gauge, I'm moving on, I'm going to the next body. About one out of every four bodies that I drill are good enough for me to race. Okay, so now that we've confirmed our drill is good, it's time to confirm the axle bend matches the drill. Now this step has to be confirmed before we can go any further. So we're going to start by adding all the wheels and axles and then setting our gaps to ten thousandths of an inch. And by the way, yes, I'm aware that many others suggest a much larger gap. I saw one video where they were suggesting using your credit card. I measured my credit card to thirty thousandths of an inch. I'm going to respectfully disagree. The, the fastest cars I've ever had all had small gaps. Okay, let's get back to alignment. My jig has a feature that I use to check to see if the front and back of the car are the same height off of the track. This screw right here. So what I do is I'll place the front end of my car directly over that screw and then raise the screw until it barely touches the bottom of my car directly between the two front axles. Then I'll turn the car around and confirm that the screw also touches the bottom of my car directly between the two rear axles. If you've determined that the front end is higher than the back end of the car, then you have too much bend on your axle. If you've determined that the back end is high, then you need to add a little more bend to the front axle. And folks, I can't stress enough, take your time here. Adjust the bend on your axle until you get this thing right.
Okay guys, so to catch up, here's what we've done. We've drilled the body. We've confirmed that the drill is good, and we've confirmed that the front and rear of the car are the same height off the track. Now we did that by adjusting the bend on the front axle. Our last step is to tune the car laterally. So that finally gets us back to the area of wood we removed next to the dominant front wheel. Now what I'll do is make sure I've added everything I'll be racing with. In this case, because this is a basics car and no aerodynamics are permitted, the only thing I'll be adding are wheels, axles, and washers. If this was a car that allowed aerodynamics, then I would also be adding my air shield. Okay, so once all that stuff is added, I'll take it to my tuning board and I'll adjust the steer to about three and a half to four inches on a 48 inch tuning board because that's about how much steer I normally use when I'm racing. Now the next step includes this block of wood. Now I created this on my laser, but it's not complicated. I'm sure you could do it with a two by four. It's eight inches long. It's one and three quarters inches wide in the back to match the width of my car. I've narrowed the front to one and five eighths of an inch to match the rail width on a Pinewood Derby track. The last thing I've done is marked a center line. Now I've also marked the center line on the body that I'll be racing. Now it's simply a matter of placing the car on top of the block of wood and lining up the center lines. At this point, the front wheel should just barely touch the side of the wooden block. Now if the front wheel is keeping you from lining up the center lines, then more mass needs to be added to the body. I normally will just add washers until I can get the center lines lined up. If the center lines meet, but the front wheel is not touching the block, then more wood needs removed on the side of the body. So just sand more off until the wheel just touches the side of the car. But don't forget about your washer. So to confirm that I've got this right, I'll just take it to my track and slow roll it. Now for those of you who don't own a track, I wouldn't be too concerned because when I follow all of these steps, and I don't cheat, I don't get lazy, I've never had to make an adjustment after the slow roll. So I've decided to include a short section on the drill jig. Now this is not exactly the same one that I used in the video. Now drill jigs have come a long way since I started racing. I remember when I first began racing, a drill jig did one thing. It drilled the holes for the body. Now it does so much more. Because the drill and the axle bend are so closely related, this drill jig includes a notch on the top so you can confirm the bend on your axle. If the axle fits in the groove, it's gonna match the height of the drill. Now this jig also has that adjustable screw we discussed used to confirm body height. And it has this window here used to mark how much wood to remove at the front wheel. The last feature I should mention is the additional bushing. If your rules say that you can't bend the front axle, this bushing is used to add steer to your body. So guys, thanks again for watching my video. If you've made it this far, I'm gonna assume that you're just as crazy about these little cars as I am. So please, if you're interested, like, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna pick a name at random, and I'm gonna give away the jig I used in this video. So anyhow, we'll see you in the next one.